So the title is The Rise of JavaScript Robotics. That's me. I work, uh, I'm involved in many things, as you can see. So robots and JavaScript, hmm? really? <laughs> uh, in two th back in 2009, everyone was saying the same when Ryan Dahl gave this talk about uh, JavaScript uh, on servers. Everyone was like, what the hell? So maybe you think the same. Node.js back then was about non-blocking I.O., which back in 2009 was something new. Interesting, hardware is blocking I.O. as well. For example, uh, you want to read a file, then you have to wait until the file is ready, read from the disk. If you want to control a, mo a motor, you have to wait until it has finished turning. Or for example, if you want to watch, uh, wait until a file is available, then uh, you don't ask every second, hey, are you ready, are you ready, are you ready, are you there yet? No, you wait, you add a watcher. Same thing if you have uh, in your robot, for example, a proximity sensor. You don't ask every second or even worse, are we there yet, are we there yet, are we there yet? You, you say, if something changes in the proximity, then do something. So it's very similar. Since robot systems are reactionary to their environment, so they always wait for some event or some data and then do something. So it's the same as Node.js on the server, it's the same. Wait for files, wait for this, wait for that, or even for in the browser, wait for click, wait for page load, all that. So hardware is blocking and JavaScript is good at async and eventing. That's why robots and JavaScript are a great match. Plus uh, the familiarity, you all know it, otherwise you wouldn't be here at that conference. The low barrier of entry because JavaScript is the most used language as we know now. There is a huge community and also it's all open source. Even some of the hardware is open source. You might ask, how does it all work? So you need hardware, for example, an Arduino. Then you put a program to control it on it, which is called Firmata. And then you need one piece, node serial port, because that allows to talk to the hardware through your serial, serial port, you, usually through USB. If you say, no, I don't want a corded robot, then you use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or LoRa or pigeons. <laughs> so uh, you don't want to uh, code your robot from scratch, so you use a framework. Same as if you do web development or if you do Node.js development. There are two main ones, Silen and Johnny5. I usually use Johnny5. The, the people that are a bit older might remember it. The movie which this robot uh, was in. But uh, instead of an Arduino, if you say, no, that's not my thing that I want to use, I have a BeagleBone, I have an Intel Edison, oh no, I have a Raspberry Pi, no, I have a Tesla 2. And the good thing about th that hardware is it runs Node.js directly on the board. So you have, let's say, a Raspberry Pi Zero, and you have an autonomous robot that runs JavaScript. Pretty cool. Or there are many Arduino clones, uh, the electric imp, the particle, the particles, and they're usually connected to a host, which means your PC that run Node.js and remote controlled. Or you could use a Piduino, which is basically uh, an Arduino hooked up to a Raspberry Pi because then you have, you have both worlds. Or you can buy a finished product from MakeBlock, for example. This one is a JavaScript robot. It's pretty cool for kids. So if you have a 12-year-old kid, they can build that in 15 minutes and program it with JavaScript through Bluetooth. Or if you want uh, 
kids to play around that are a bit younger, maybe eight or 10 years old, you can use little bits and they have an Arduino bit and from there you can access it uh, with JavaScript, with Johnny5. How does it work? How does, it, how does the code look like? So that you can get uh, an idea. The hello world of hardware is usually an LED blinking. So this is the code to have an LED blinking. And you, use, you can use the same code for every hardware that I talked about earlier. You don't have to change anything. That's all. Here is the Arduino, here is the LED, and now it blinks with a few lines of code. I think that's pretty cool. But we don't want LEDs, we want a robot. So we take some parts, uh, laser cut, 3D printed part from the store. Then we assemble that and decorate it a bit, like a fight robot. Then you start to connect the motors to the Arduino. This is the code to make one uh, servo turn. Okay, we need two wheels because a one-wheeled robot is not that much fun. So we connect the second one. Uh, we create more instances of a servo. And then we listen, we basically listen to key presses on your PC. And depending on the key presses, we send events to the motors. If you press forward, go forward. If you press backwards, go backwards. That's your robot. Then you might say, okay, let's do more. You add a proximity sensor, which uh, is usually ultrasonic, or a line follower, so you can draw something on the floor and it will follow. Or you could add a compass, so it knows where it's going. You could, an ex you could add an accelerometer, because then you know when it touches something, when it drives into a wall or into a human. Uh, you could add a GPS. Then you know exactly where you are. Then you would actually find the exit from here. So I say go, go and build something because you have all the tools. There's actually a ro robot workshop later on. Thank you. <laughs>